Caracas in the world. Jason Street, welcome. So I've got a very interesting talk this, this time uh, because I'm doing two talks. This is the, the well, I don't know if it's the boring one. That would be insulting because it's like, but it's the, it's, I knew that there was going to be a lot of political and business people here. So I thought it was like, what can I do for a keynote? On Friday, I'm going to talk about robbing banks and like showing videos of that. And that's like all the cool stuff that everybody wants to see. But I decided to start off today since uh, a lot of people, especially that may have never been to a hacking conference before, or they just see in the news, they see the scary red dude in the hoodie with the Anon mask and like, ooh, hackers, we're scared. You know, so I thought I'd do a, a special kind of talk uh, today, Act um, uh, actually about who's a hacker and what's a hacker. So uh, I'm going to try to not speak too fast because unfortunately I'm from America, so I only speak one language and I'm from Texas, so I don't speak it very well. Uh, so uh, I am going to do my best, uh, but uh, uh, please uh, bear with me. So this is the most uh, boring slide. It's just my stuff. So what I like to do is I, I tell people, like, if you don't know who I am or why I'm credited to, to, to speak here, that's okay. Uh, the things that you need to know about me is I like riding, riding my motorcycle. I like speaking and educating other people. I like getting on the news and, and educating reporters. Uh, I love traveling the world. Um, I rob banks. And I play No Man's Sky, which is like my favorite game. So uh, that's me. That's what I like to do. Nothing fancy. Now, what is a hacker? One of the biggest misconceptions in our, you know, history of, of hacking is that people think that hacking is like this one thing, and this is how you become a hacker, or this is what makes you a hacker. And that is, you know, what's the polite word for crap in Kazakhstan? I don't know, but, that, but that's, that's, what the, that's not true. It's like, so we were used to called inventors and scientific hooligans, and now we're like to visionaries to criminals. And that's wrong. That's not the way it should be. History is a cycle of defining those who valiantly fight being defined. I love the fact that as hackers, we want to be like mysterious and dark. You know, got the hoodie and the computers and whoo, boom, hackers, right? Really? The more people don't know what you do, the more they are afraid. And the more they are afraid, the more they will try to attack you. So that's not really a great strategy for us. It's like we should be proudly telling people what we are and how we are and what we do. Not trying to make it like some kind of magic, you know, it's like typing on the keyboard a hundred, really, really fast and like, oh, look, code, we just, we hacked the Gibson. Good job. It's like, no, we should be explaining that to the people. We should letting them know. And I love the word scientific hooligans because that was used to describe a person in the 1800s who, when was getting upset about a guy who had invented a secure telegraph system, like a long time ago, right? A secure telegraph system. The hacker decided like, no, this is not secure. You're, 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 you're stealing all this money from people thinking that this is the secure technology. This is not. So when the guy went to invent, uh, I mean, went to demonstrate and, and show everybody the secure telegraph, the scientific hooligan, the hacker, he intercepted the telegraph that was supposed to be secure and it was just profanity laced and talking very badly about the inventor of it. And it was hilarious. And it was a proof of concept, you know, you effed around and you found out it was like, that was not cool. It's like, and you never be, always be careful of the demos. And so the guy, the inventor was so upset he called him a scientific hooligan. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm gonna start using that name for me. <laughs> it's like, I'm a scientific hooligan. That's what we are. We're all kinds of different people. But what does it mean to be a hacker? Well, guess what? 
Everyone in this room is a hacker. Every single person in this room is a hacker. Surprise! It's like, yeah, okay. It's like, and the reason why is because you were born a hacker. It is nonsense to believe that there's a quality. You remember, well, I, you can't remember when you were three, but if you could, that's really cool. But have you ever been around a three-year-old? And it's like, and this is the same everywhere on the planet. We're all human, no matter what we look like or what our culture is, we're all human. There is no difference. It's like, so I guarantee you, you've been around a three-year-old, what do they do? Why? Why is this guy like that? It's like, why is this person looking like this? What does this do? How does this happen? How can I make this go to here? I don't want to do it that way. Can I do it something else? Right? That is what a three-year-old does. They ask questions. They are curious and they are passionate and they are imaginative. That is a hacker. That is all a hacker is about someone who is curious and who is passionate and inventive, trying to come up with solutions that maybe sometimes don't even need fixing, but just wants to find a different way to do something. This is the way everybody told me it was supposed to be. Yeah, I wanna do this. Let's try to see if I can do it this way. Oh, that failed horribly. Let me try just a little bit different, a different way. That's hacking. Where did we get to the point where hacking has to be on a computer? Hacking has nothing to do with computers. Nothing. We use our hacking passion, our hacking curiosity of a hacker, and what we're doing now is we're using computers as that tool. We're using computers as our way of hacking. That's not the way hacking has always been. Leonardo da Vinci was a hacker. He was an Uber hacker. Tesla was a hacker. Hedy Lamar, uh, this is one of my favorites. She, the worst thing that um, uh, people say about Hedy Lamar is that she was an American actress. That's stupid, okay? The reason why is they want to define her by her beauty and her acting when in actuality they should be recognizing Hedy Lamar is the reason we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth today. She is the one that started the, uh, the, the discovery and the inventing and, and working on it and, and creating that science to be possible back in the 1940s and 50s. But people want to call her an actress first. No, she should be called a hacker first because that's what she did. And it's not something that's just in one area. You are known for your hackers as well. You've had hackers throughout your history. It's like, um, I am not a person who likes mangling other people's languages just because I don't know how to say them. So I'm going to go with number one at the top. It's like uh, he started to pick up writing uh, actually when he was 40. He wasn't 40, he wasn't until he was 40 years old that he started uh, writing. But he's also the one that actually created the Mirror of the Kazakhs. It's like he is also like a founder. Of, of doing that, like uh, in 2018, was it 2018 or 2008? No, 2008. Remember, I'm sure you were here. It was actually declared the year of him because that's the kind of lasting impact he has had on this country. How it, of a person just trying to create and going and saying, this is what I was doing, but now I'm going to do something totally different and was amazing at it. How could that not be hacking? It's like, what about the second person there? They were actually the principal uh, advocate and first president of the Kazakhstan Academy of Sciences. I mean, literally on the money, right? It's like the, the old the coins. It's like, and he was actually, when he did that, uh, the work that I loved about what he did was when he was doing the prediction of the copper 
and prediction of the copper and geology and minerals in the, in the country, in the region, everybody was coming at them. Like, you know, show me the, the, the receipts, show me the work, show me. And he defended it. It's like for years showing that his stuff was correct until finally they were like, oh yeah, this is right. You, you were correct. And he's like, yeah, thanks. Right? So it's like, that's hacking. It's like, and the third one, it's like she was the, um, uh, I, I would say, she was awarded the International uh, Goldman Environmental Prize in 2005 for leading a campaign to prevent nuclear waste from being imported to Kazakhstan. A famous biologist, it's like who's still alive today, still working in uh, helping with uh, radiation and exposure and the biological contaminants of that kind of thing. Making breakthroughs and helping the people here. Those are hackers. But you know what? It doesn't stop there. What about all these new hackers? This new generation? You got, you got the first one right there who was actually, um, oops. There it is. It's like, oh, I got it in reverse order. I'm trying, I don't, I don't, I don't like messing things up here. So it's like, I like to get it right. But, um, there it is. Uh, she invented a complex research model to study Venus. So when they actually send the satellite or send the ship to explore another planet, it was someone from Kazakhstan who helped make that possible. That's hacking. And that's awesome, actually, freaking, I mean, who doesn't love planets? It's like, so yeah, those are cool. Uh, and then the second one, came up with an, an, an idea to predict, uh, predict the risk of negative genetic effects from exposure to low doses of radiation, helping to affect people today from the radiation exposure and stuff that, that occurred uh, at um, Similipalomitskisk. Sorry, I said that wrong too, but I tried. It's like, so, and then also in Kirill, I love Kirill, it's like, 16 years old, 16 years old, at the age of 16, he created a pneumatic catapult, which is now successfully operating in airplane laboratories around the country, was built in 2013. The unit was invented by, by him, and he was the, um, this device is used to test new wing types and forms, as well as to help teach the basics of aerodynamics at the age of 16. That's hacking. Sorry. It's like, I'm sure they use computers every once in a while. And you think that exploring the, the networks in your hoodie is cool, but that's pretty cool too. And that's hacking and they deserve their due. It's like, we have too much gatekeeping in our communities where it's like, if you don't know how to program, you can't really be a hacker. It's like, if you haven't done hacking or pen testing or, or broken into the, a network, you can't really be called a hacker. I couldn't program to save my life. I can't. I'm not, I tried. Uh, my youngest child is better at it than I am. It's like, I just gave up. I don't need to do that. We don't need to have other people trying to tell us, you know, if we can go through the gate. We're hackers. Screw the gate, jump the fence, go under the fence, go around it. It's like, it's just a, it's just a gate. And that means also not to self gate keep. Don't say, well, I don't know how to really do this very well. So I shouldn't try it. That's crap. I sucked at programming, but I still tried it. I still did. I didn't let it stop me. It's like, and so that's what I'm telling you. It's like, you have that hacker ability to just go and say, Hey, I'm good at this. I'm not so great at that. I'm really good at this. I'm going to focus on the things that I'm happy about, or I'm going to learn the things that I need to learn more of. And also, do you know that y'all create over 8,000 new patents almost a year here in Kazakhstan? Constantly innovating, constantly coming up with new ideas. My top favorite that I found was you created women's shoes, removable heels. Come on, ladies, you know how those heels can be. It's like, you know, especially if you have to stand on them for too long in a formal function. Well, now it's like, you can just like, bleep, 
you know, and, and put a new one on. It's like, a, it's like a, just all kinds of versatile, versatility there. Uh, my favorite, of course, is the horse milk chocolate because it's actually a healthy form of chocolate. And now I can tell people, oh, no, I'm just being healthy. No, I have to have at least three more of these candy bars. It's for my health. Don't worry. I'm good. It's like, um, and then also, this is also a good one. The method of removing ink from office paper, which is supposed to be able to help, uh, you know, resources and save trees from having to constantly be, uh, the paper can be reused instead of having to keep getting more and printing more. Kazakhstan is one of the most eco-friendly uh, in places where it's like inventions are coming from, where people are trying to create different ways to be beneficial to the uh, uh, um, ecology and the, uh, the climate. But let's not just stop there. Let's start talking about the world, right? Because when we classify hackers, it's like one of the things that I like to denote, the reason why I think everybody's a hacker, it's like some people lose the hacker gene. Some people through their age, as they're getting older, their family's telling them they shouldn't ask so many questions. The school is telling them what they should know and what they should learn, and they shouldn't be so unruly and ask these uncomfortable questions. And they sort of kill that spirit. But then there's others that survive it. That even in their 20s, even after they're 16, it's like they, they go on and they still ask why. That's a hacker. And that's my tribe. It's like the uh, Kazakhs, it's like, you know, our nomadic tribe. It's like hackers is another form of ethnicity for me. That is my tribe. So I don't care what country an invisible line on a map dictates you're from. You're my tribe. You're someone that I am part of. It's like this whole thing that we have to be different to be better is wrong. It's like the fact that we have to say that politics make any part of who we are or who our friends are. I have friends from all over the world. I have friends that don't talk to each other, uh, to the, my other friends, because of where they happen to live or who they happen to pray to or who they happen to love. And that's sad because we are all humans and we are all hackers. You are part of my tribe. It's like, I don't have to know you all. I don't have to know where you actually came from. It's like, you're still a hacker. You still belong with me. And that's how we need to start looking at it more. That it's like, we can't let our politics define who our friends are, or who's a hacker and who isn't. We're all there, and we all belong to be there. So now we know there's over, no, thank you. It's like, so uh, there's over 9,000, you know, over 9,000, yes. It's like reasons to embrace the hacker in you. So even if you're not someone who is like, identifies as a hacker, who says, oh, I'm not really technical, be like the guy who started writing at 40. Start that. I did not start into information security as a career until I was in my 30s. I'm old, okay? So it's like, you have to understand that. It's like, there is no excuse except for the ones that you make for yourself. The ones that you gates keep yourself with. And remember what I said about the gates. We don't need those. Now, I know this part of my talk was really quick, and it's like, and you're like, well, Jason, this wasn't much, but like I said, the scary stuff comes on Friday. It's like, so what I want to do is something a little bit different. It's like, a lot of people here have questions, right? You're a hacker, you have questions. It's like, but maybe sometimes we don't really find a way to like, well, I don't know who to ask about a question like that. It's like, I don't know who I would ask or, or how I would ask that. Well, guess what? I'm telling you right now is your chance because the rest of this talk is you. I want you to ask me a question. 
I want you to, there are people with mics and they can translate for you because you don't have to like, because it's like everybody has been making such a wonderful effort to help uh, uh, speak English for me because they know I'm, you know, deficient in everything else. It's like with that, it's like, and I appreciate that. So don't feel like you have to be put on the spot to, uh, to say your question in English. Someone will translate it for you, but we're going to ask questions and I'm going to answer And trust me, I do not filter. So you are going, I get paid to lie for a living. I don't do it for free. So it's like, so I'm going to tell you exactly what I think. And so you ask me any kind of question and be careful about that because I'm serious. I will answer it. And I, I like to bring the, you know, the, the, the whole fable, the carrot and the stick. So the carrot is, if you ask a question, I'll give you a cool DEF CON sticker. And I don't have that many. So it's like, I'll give you a cool DEF CON sticker for everybody who asks a question. And don't worry if no one wants to ask a question and there's like a long, awkward pause, that's okay. Because I will run down this stage and I will randomly select one of you and put the mic in your face and ask you to ask me a question. So we're gonna get questions no matter what, people. Let's at least try to enjoy it. And trust me, people have tested that. They were, they were surprised. So let's go with it now. Who has the first question? Raise your hand. Yes, we have someone right here. And I need, to, uh, I need this, someone who's gonna run around to like uh, hold off some stick, uh, have some stickers in their hands. Oh, well that, okay, okay, you'll be next. Uh, hello? Yes. Uh, my question is, uh, which university can recommend it for starting to uh, learn about hacking on the future? Not in Kazakhstan, you can uh, uh, recommend every university in the world. Who has the best hackers? No, uh, which university is best for uh, teaching uh, about hacking? What, what, oh, which method? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, just like, what's the best method uh, to learn hacking and do hacking? It's very simple. Which one works for you? I can't tell you, you know, uh, especially a log time uh, in late night on US television, you will see 50 different ways to lose weight. That's 100% guaranteed to make sure, you, you know, an exercise bike or, you know, water, it's like, or you use these little shake weights or like just all these different kinds of inventions to help you lose weight that's guaranteed to make sure you lose weight. That's crap. It's like the best way for you. There is no defined path to learn and understand. What holds your interest? It's like, and that is the key thing. If you are passionate about something, you're going to learn about it. You're going to find out. And trust me, you have access to the biggest, you know, uh, resources and library in the world bigger than the Library of Alexandria. It's like, it's called the internet. It's like, I mean, it's not just for cat photos. They actually, you can actually do research, find out what you want to learn. It's like there was a, a young man in Africa who literally bicycled to the village, next village to get access to the internet, to learn how to create windmills. So he could put that into his village and found a different and better way that was cost effective to create a windmill water pump for his village. That's hacking and that's determination. So yeah, you, I can't tell you this is the way that you're going to be able to be a hacker. It's like, or this is how you're going to learn because you gotta be careful about those people who say that. It's like, it's just not gonna be there. Uh, so this one, uh, this one gentleman in the gray jacket, I saw him first. It's like, and then there's like a couple other people and I will try to look over this way as well. Well, first of all, hello, Jason. It's, uh, it's insane uh, just seeing you here in Kazakhstan in Almaty. So I'm going to ask my questions in two languages so that the, the rest of the people who you know, don't speak English that well can understand the question. Okay. But uh, first of all, I'll do it in English so that you'll have time to think about it. <laughs> okay. And then I'll switch to Russian. So uh, yeah, as again, very glad that you're here it's again. Uh, just this morning, I was brushing my teeth, just trying to remember uh, Jason Street, and then I... I opened the video on YouTube and it was DEFCON 19 on your talk about like killing everyone, destroying everything. And then it, it clicked on me like, I saw this dude like about 10 years ago 
and it, it's insane that he's coming here and he's, you know, like, it, it just, yeah, it's, it, it's about that time back then when I realized, like, how cool pen testing is. So uh, my question is, um, so what was the, the closest moment to failure when you were pen testing, like, a critical system or maybe some big corporation? What was the most, like, closest you were to failure, closest to being found out? Вот. Okay. So, and I'll, I'll switch to Russian. Yes, yes, quick definitely. translation. Вот. Хотелось поблагодарить Джейсона, на самом деле. Очень крутой чувак. Пентестер. Uh, У него есть очень классное видео uh, DevCon 19. Убивайте всех, уничтожайте все. Ну, примерно так переводится. И он рассказывает про свой опыт, uh, как он пытается uh, взломать системы. Интересно, и как он использует social engineering для этого. Вот мой вопрос. Uh, как... Uh, Пусть Джейсон расскажет про свой э, момент, когда он был близок всего к провалу во время э, пентестика, во время попытки э, попасть, попасть в компанию или взломать ее. Вот. Спасибо. Thank you. Right. So, I've had a... Yes, that was a good question. Cause, and I'm glad you asked it, because everybody talks about their successes. Every talk, everybody talks about how cool they are and what they've done, and like, oh, I broke this, and... I, I have screwed up so badly so many times. About five years ago, I did a whole complete talk for an hour about my biggest failures because we need to understand failure is a learning opportunity. Failure helps us to grow because it gives us a way to think, okay, that didn't work, what else can I do? It's like, I think my biggest network pen testing failure was when I first started out back in 2005 uh, doing pen testing and, and network vulnerability stuff. Uh, and I literally just totally foobarred, uh, screwed up, destroyed, didn't work very right after I was done, a whole Cisco server for a client because I used the wrong switch in Nmap. Not good. Not good at all. And of course, I was like, I don't know, it was working just a second ago. I don't know if it was me. It's like, you need to fix that. It's like, it was bad. My biggest mistake, my biggest failure is when I accidentally robbed the wrong bank uh, one time in Beirut. Everybody thinks that's a cool story, but in actuality, that was a massive fail because I was not in scope. I did not pay attention. And it's like, and I walked into the wrong bank and it's like, and I wasn't supposed to be there. And you're only supposed to rob the people that actually want you to rob them. It's like, it's not cool when you do it to somebody else, uh, which I found out very, I mean, it took me four hours to stay out of Lebanese prison. So yeah, that is a good, good lesson to learn uh, from someone else. Uh, one of my favorite things to be said is a smart man learns from his mistakes. A wise person learns from the mistakes of someone else. I'm, I try to be smart, but I want other people to be wise. So it's like I, I provide a lot of those ways for that. Uh, so that is what my biggest failure was. But it's like failure is awesome. It's like because that gives us a different way to gives us a step back to look at, okay, that did work. What else can I do then? What's another way to do something? So embrace those failures because those are the ways. Uh, and actually just uh, my friend here, uh, one of the volunteers was actually said, uh, it's like, like Bob Ross, the American painter said, you know, happy little accidents. So it's like, you know, it's like, that's what they are. Yes, and now you uh, had raised your hand and you're very eager. Hi, how you doing? Uh, let someone come with a mic real quick. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I have a question. Yes. In the future, I want to be a hacker and work in IT. So for what I need to start? Uh, okay, I, I'm sorry, it's like, because the, the uh, hold, hold down a little bit more, there was a reverb on the mic. I'm partially deaf, so it's hard for me to hear sometimes. Say it okay. one more time. Okay, uh, in the future, I want to be a hacker and work in IT. So uh, what do you need to start? <laughs> okay, yes. Oh. For uh, what? So you want to be a hacker and you're looking for, um, I'm sorry, I, it's, it's, hard, it's, it's just hard to hear the last she, part. She wants to be a hacker in the future. Yes. And what kind of things she needs to learn? Oh, okay, yes. 
Okay, first of all, congratulations, you're a hacker now. It doesn't matter what anybody says. You're a hacker now, okay? And don't let anyone ever tell you differently, okay? It's like if they do, you tell them to talk to us, okay? And we'll correct them. It's like, because you belong in this community too, because you've got that passion and that curiosity. It's like, if you are trying to learn hacking, you have to ask yourself one important question when it comes to computers is, you want to be a hacker, but what do you want to do? It's like, it's up to you to ask, answer that question. Do you want to learn how to program? Do you want to learn how to hack robotics? Do you want to learn how to hack networks? Do you want to ha uh, learn how to hack cars or Wi-Fi or robots? It's like, that is up to you. It's like, so you choose what you want to learn more about because all of that can be hacking. It's like all of that. So don't limit yourself to say, well, I need to learn this to be a hacker because you've already succeeded at that. It's like, now you just need to learn what you wanna, what you wanna do. A lot of people come to me and they ask me, Jason, can you teach me to be a hacker? And that's not the right question. What they're asking usually is, Jason, how do I make money at hacking? How do I make money at this? How do I make this into a job? And it's the same thing I tell everyone. It's like, it doesn't matter what you do to get a job. This, everybody can get a job in, in hacking and cybersecurity. It's a very profitable place. Don't ever worry about money. Find something you're passionate about and then get someone to pay you for it. It's that simple. I have stopped working over a decade ago. It's like I did, I stopped working. I now get paid to do what I love. It's like, it's awesome, trust me. It's like, that's what you need to do. That's hashtag life goals right there. Just find out what you love to do, learn it as much as you can, get really good at it, and someone's going to pay you to do that for them. It's awesome. So it's like, take it from me. So that's what it is. So you're already a hacker. Now just find out what you want to do with that. Uh, someone on this side, yes, a gentleman over here with a hand up. Hello, Jason. Thank you for the talk. Um, my question is, um, every time, every hour, second, and uh, this time, uh, something changes. Uh, so companies are doing updates and somebody find issues. So how do you stay up to date? Oh, how do you stay up to date? Yep. Um, it involves a lot of Twitter. Uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, and I don't mean just like posting all my other stuff, but it's like, it is, first of all, congratulations, you can never be up to date. It's like the best thing you can do is find the areas that you're interested in and just keep an eye on it. It's like, I have, I have like uh, Ars Technia, uh, the register, uh, Twitter, there's a lot of different people that I follow or I have in list that are always posting new research or new things that they're doing. And it's really cool to see all the different kinds of things that is going out there. But if my company is involved in, you know, working on security on SCADA systems, well then that's what I need to focus on and make sure I'm checking those resources. I mean, someone's doing some really cool car hacking, that's awesome, may not be possibly what you're doing, or it's like for your company, or it's like what you wanna learn more about. So you just gotta, there are different little subsections of Reddit and Twitter and other places where you can find, and Telegram groups that you can find uh, people that are passionate about what you're trying to learn and they are constantly posting information and that is the best way to keep up. It's like, it's, it's not about learning and trying to study. It's about just keeping up and trying to figure out what can help you and what's something new and interesting that keeps you interested in doing what you like because burnout is real, people. It's like, it's all fun and games to say to do something you love until someone starts making it miserable because they're giving you money for it. So don't burn out like that. Don't feel like it's like, don't lose that passion for it. Keep the things that you're interested in and keep that spark going uh, that way. Uh, yes, there's a question over there. This gentleman, yeah, please stand up. Yes, that works. Hi, bro. Uh, my question is, what is your favorite tool? 
My favorite tool? Yes. Okay, just please. a second. When testers are using any tools, I want to know which is your favorite tool. Right. My favorite Thank tool you. is going to be Google. <laughs> Google is the best hacking tool ever invented in the history of mankind. You can't change my mind on it. Okay, do you know why? Because I can spend less than one hour on Google and I can find all the information I need on how to break into a company. On Friday, I'm literally going to show you how I use Google to hack an IT, uh, one of the top four auditors in the world because it was fun. Don't tell them that I did that because they don't know if they know by now, but we'll see. But yeah, Google is the best tool a hacker has, not just for doing recon, doing phishing attacks, doing pretexting information, but literally just Google it. You know, it's like, or, you know, Bing or, or Yodex, or it's like, you know, it's like anyone, just use the search engine that you like. It's like, and then find out like, how do I do this? How do I do that? It's like, uh, TikTok's getting pretty good at doing that stuff too, but it's like, I'll start with Google. Yes. Uh, you, uh, you, her, then you. Yes. Come on, you guys. You're slacking. You got you to gotta step up. Hello. Uh, so, achievements you are proud mostly in hacking. Repeat one more time. I'm trying to hear you. Achievements. Achievements? You, yes. You are mostly proud of. Oh, the most proud of. Yes. Um, I see. Well, being here is one thing because I mean, and I mean that not just like locally here. Um, I used to be a high school, I'm a high school dropout who used to live behind a dumpster. I was homeless when I was a teenager. It's like, and the fact that it's like, I just kept going, it's like, is an achievement. And it's like, I also deal with a lot of, you know, depression and mental issues and stuff, you know? So it's like, uh, I'm still here is a big achievement, trust me. There's been a lot of people, including myself, that have tried to not make that happen. Uh, so that's a good achievement. But professionally, it happened in 2020, uh, in the before times, before the apocalypse. It was uh, January of 2020. A client that I had went to the year before hired me again to do the same kind of uh, engagement. And the first year, I destroyed them. I literally... The guy who hired us found me sitting in his chair in his office when he got back from a meeting going like, hi, uh, I don't know if you were expecting me, but I'm here. And it's like, and I had an employee badge that I had stolen off of someone else's desk. I had full access to everything. I totally just went through everything. Do you know what they did in that year? They didn't put up pictures of me saying, beware of this guy. No, they taught their employees. They made it a an important part of their company uh, environment that they took security seriously. The owner of the company spoke on their yearly meeting for 15 minutes on the importance of security awareness. So I showed back up in 2020 and you know what happened? I got caught so many times. And mostly every different section, someone questioned me saying, uh, no, we're not allowed to like let someone touch our computer until we get an email from the help desk. It's like, do you have authorization? Uh, who should I call to verify you? It's like every single section that, I mean, I still broke in. I still got some, some uh, roots. I still got to go like, yay, I, I, I did my job. That didn't matter because instead of a five month breach, they only had a five minute breach. I was only successful for like a window of like 30 minutes tops before someone questioned me and asked me what I was doing. One of the biggest myths is that you're not going to get breached. I've clicked on a phishing link before people, we're not perfect, we're human. It's like, we need to understand that. So it's not how build, big you build the walls, you know, it's like, you know, cause American, love the walls. No, sorry. Uh, it's like, no, it's how quickly can you detect 
an attack and a breach and how quickly can you respond to it will be the difference between your company going under or being profitable. It's like a five minute breach is a lot easier to deal with than a five month one that puts you out of business. So that's what the key was. They caught me and it was the best success I've ever had and I loved it. It was awesome. I was like, because if you're in red team, if you are a red team, a red teamer or a penetration tester and you are not rooting for your client to succeed, you suck. The only reason the red team exists is to make the blue team better. That is their only function. The people that are penetration testing, they are the only reason why they're there is to help the companies and their clients find the vulnerabilities before the criminals do. That's what their job is. They're not supposed to be the adversary. They're supposed to be the advocate for their client. And that's something we need to start being remembering more because you get a lot of red teamers that are like, you know, full of that toxic masculinity, like, you know, yeah, I'm a red teamer. I'm like, Rasha, I'm gonna like, you know, walk in and I'm just going to own everything. I'm like, how does that help your client? It's like, how does that teach them what they need to do? How does that give them the information they need to do better? It's like you are rooting for your client's success. You are rooting to make sure that your client does better. Because if I walked in the second year and I was able to do the same exact things that I did before and not get caught, I failed horribly in a bad way. Because that means I let my client down. I didn't properly show them why they needed to take that stuff seriously. And it's like, and I failed them. And that's not what we want to happen. So it doesn't matter how fancy and wonderful your O days are, if you can't properly write the report and show what those vulnerabilities are so the client fixes them, you're wasting everybody's time and money. It's like, I'm talking really loud directly at you. That's not directly towards you. It's like, but that's to everybody. It's like, so you got to understand that. So, you know, the next one. And I'm going to keep walking. I don't know when my time's up, so I'm just going to keep talking until they, they run me out. But I'll still be around uh, after the conference. I'll be here all three days if you want to stop and ask me questions later. But yes, you, sir. So, okay. Uh, my question is that, have you ever been treated by other huggers? Have I ever been... Threated? Or oh, threatened? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, I've been threatened. Oh, my gosh. I get so much hate. It's not even funny. It's hilarious. Um, it's, it's, it is so funny because especially a, a lot of, of, of crap that I get online, it's like, because I, and this is being totally honest, I survived my first murder attempt when I was 10, when someone tried to kill me. It's like, and, and I lived that. I got stitches still in my head from it. No, I don't have the stitches. I have the scar. But yeah, there were stitches. So uh, People on the internet, they love to talk, you know, oh, I'm going to, I'm like, but try it, buddy. It's like, I've been through worse and I survived it. You're not that special. It's like, I say worse things about myself to myself before 10 in the morning, before any other freaking hacker or bad guy wants to say to me online, because that's just ridiculous. And I've confronted people who have talked trash on me online, who have threatened me online. And I found them at a conference. And I literally stepped right up to their face like, uh, yeah, let's go back to that conversation we were having where you were saying this. What are you going to say now to my face? And it's so, it's so weird. It's like when you're in person, they're so nice. And they like really don't want to like any confrontation. And they don't say much. And I'm like, Mother, if you, you can say whatever you want about me, it's totally okay. You can threaten me all you want. That's totally okay. Mother, you better be able to back it up though. Because I'm not one of those people who just like goes and says, well, I don't, I'm a little worried about it. No, I'm the find out about it guy. It's like, because when you F around like that, I'll show you how to find out and what happens. It's like, so yeah, I've been threatened and we're all going to be threatened. And you know what? The more you speak your truth, the more you speak out for what's right, the more threats you're going to get. It's like, there was a, 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 an actor who said, uh, I literally forgot his name. It's like, uh, but he said, uh, it's like the surest way 
Uh, and video, if video games have taught me anything, is that the best indicator, I'm paraphrasing, but the best indicator of progress is that you're facing enemies. It's like, that's how you know you're going in the right direction. It's like, if you're not facing people who are standing up or are upset with what you say, maybe reevaluate what you're doing. It's like, because people don't like change, especially when it's for the good. So yeah, I'm never shutting up and I'm never stopping. And it's like, obviously as this talk is drawn on, it's like, that's obvious. But yeah, you speak your truth and let everybody else say what they wanna say. Uh, there was someone over here, it's like, uh, let go with this person there. And then, uh, then you, okay. the person in the white shirt. I got two left and we're gonna call it at the two, but I'll have some other ones later. I have some extras later. Yeah, hello. Um, I have a more like sort of ethic question. So uh, what stops you from going to the dark side? What stops me from going to the dark side? Yeah. Um, very easy. Uh, I don't want to. I'm a bad person. See, this is one of the things people don't understand. I'm a bad person. I'm a bad person who tries to be good, who wants to be good. I was raised in a very abusive, traumatic childhood. It was horrible. And in my 20s, I was not a good person. I was not good. It's like I made the conscious decision, though, that that wasn't the right way to live. It's like, and I made that choice. And it's like, so we can't have this whole like, well, it's like, could they tempt you with this? But no. It's like, because my self-esteem, my worth is too precious for me to be able to look in the mirror to take money to commit a crime or to do, and also I'm just really, I'm really good at committing crimes when people want me to, not when I'm doing it and I know it because it's like, I know it's wrong. It's like, so no, I'm never going to go to the dark side because you just, I can't be tempted that way. It's just, it doesn't work. I'm the kind of person when someone gives me more money when they're giving me change, I am the first person to tell them, excuse me, you gave me too much money. This is what it's supposed to be. Because they may get docked for that. They may get in trouble for that. And that's not right. It's like, and that's the basic core of who you are. You can't be tempted by money. You can't, it's your basic core. It's like, are you a good person? Do you want to see something good in the world? And if you don't, then you do you, boo, but that's not me. It's like, I... On my deathbed, I'm not gonna be asking myself how much money I made. I'm not gonna be asking how successful I was or how famous I was. I'm gonna be thinking, did I make an impact? Did I help others? Are people going to look at me as, after I'm dead with kindness because of what I did? Or are they gonna just forget about me because I deserve to be forgotten because of how I acted? That's how I live my life. Uh, one last person. Oh, oh, okay. I'm going to give you a sticker anyway, but they're telling me to get the, off the stage. <laughs> it's like, but I'll give you the sticker and you please, I'll be outside around so I'm not causing a distraction and I will I answer questions then. Thank you very much, everyone. Oh, wait, hold on. I forgot to put that button there. There's your fluffy kit.